There it is. Money, grand cash. Mm, I think cash is so sexy. Don't you? Hope you don't mind if we count it. Be my guest, mate. You know, I think this is the happiest day of my life. Mine too. So, when do I get to see the little blighter? Billy? to celebrate. Man after my own heart. Carol? Mm, well, yes, please, Graham. After she's finished counting. <laughs> About half a dozen private collectors waiting for this little beauty back home. <coughs> Should get top dollar. I'm glad I could help. It's strange, you know. In the old days, we used to swipe it first, then try and flog it. These days, everything's to order. There's a bloke in Melbourne. Read one of those celebrity at home things in his wife's magazine. He's taken a shine to the clock on Nicole Kidman's mantelpiece. Got a crew in LA right now. <laughs> 90,000. Exactly. Great. Get that drink, sweetheart. Mm, cheers. So, have you finished your business in London? Hell no. We've got three more orders before. What are you doing? I'll tell you that. Now, hold on, fella. Back up, big boy. Sit down. Hands under your jacksie. What the hell is going on? Change of plan. I'll say that too. Carol? There you go, girl. What are you doing? You work for me. Think of this as my resignation. You can't do this. Watch me. You know who I am. Why? You've forgotten. I'll have you hunted down like a dingo. Yeah. South America is a very big place. Good luck. Oh, yeah. If you're not want this back, mate, tell him to do it on the field, like we did. That's my money. Not anymore, it's not. I will not... You make one more move, son, and I'll use this. Yeah? Haven't got the balls. No? <laughs> Don't know. Adios, amigos. John! We need to get to a doctor. I can't be here. What? I can't be found in the middle of a shooting. But he's hurt! You're not listening to me. I can't get involved in this. It's okay. I'll call numbers. John. Look, I'm sorry, mate. I have to get out of here. I'll keep you out of here. Just... just go. You're a flaming diamond, mate, and don't worry about that little weasel. I'll find him. Remind me again what I pay you for. Ambulance, please. Eddie's bar. Change alley, EC1. Hurry, quick, it's an emergency. Seriously, though, it was a brilliant one, right? You were great, Benny, great. But all that stuff about winning the Ashes back on the field. That way, did. That was in the script. Listen, mate, that's ad libbing, that's the texture. You're lucky you didn't start singing Jerusalem. How could I wait, though? Seriously. I mean, the others are going to be well shot. Yes. Do you know what bit I like best? Even thanked me. Sorry, Mick. Somebody not pay the TV license? Don't worry, let's just find out what this is about. First. There's nothing wrong with having a suitcase full of cash. Is there? This yours? I don't remember seeing a search warrant. This yours? It's mine, and my poker winning. Mickey picked them up for me. Big game went on for days. I can't even remember the players. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute.
Consider yourself nicked. Preliminary interview with Michael Stone. Present are Detective Chief Inspector Matthew York and Detective Sergeant Deborah Eastman. We're having 5 p.m. Congratulations, Michael. There was enough cocaine found in that case to qualify you as a major distributor. We both know it doesn't belong to me. It was found in your possession. Arbor Strill admitted the case belonged to him. Which means he'll get 20 years. His age, that will amount to life. You and the others will be charged with dealing. What do you do for a living, Michael? Oh, you know, this and that. Oh, well, I do very well. I have a lifestyle from what I can see. Expensive clothes. Penthouse flat. Look, can we please just cut to the chase? We all know the only way those drugs could have gotten into that case is if you put them there. They said you were smart. So what now? I can still put you and your friends away. I could find a brief to tear you to shreds. You've got four. You live a millionaire's lifestyle with no visible income. Six kilos of cocaine found in your apartment and you're black. Who are you going to get? Perry Mason. What do you want? Adam Rice. The press like to call him the ghost. I call him a thief. He steals to order. Amongst other things, he's credited with the theft of the 1623 first folio edition of the works of Shakespeare from Durham University in 1998, and the theft of Edvard Munch's painting, The Scream, from a museum in Norway, September 2004. You're a bright boy, Mickey. What comes next? You'd like me to catch him for you. This is blackmail. Call it helping the police with their inquiries, love. I need a big collar. This is the biggest. You deliver rice, I'll drop all the charges against you. That's big of you. Can I just say something? What? Well, I, you know, now we're all uh, crooks together and all that. I was just wondering what happened to the money in the case. You know, the 90 grand that you shits nicked and replaced with cocaine. <laughs> Don't you ever get me confused, gobshite. You're the crooks. I'm the police officer. And the only reason I can bear to breathe the same air as you now is that I want Adam Rice behind bars more than I want you. Now, is there anything in there you don't understand? No, it's just about got all that one. Good. <clears throat> you got an hour to make up your mind. Time's up. You know damn well I haven't got a choice. No, you haven't. Well, I can't do very much from in here. Which is why I'm letting you go. These are top security cells away from the main custody suite. And DS Eastman will be supervising your time with us, so... as far as anyone else is concerned, you'll still be here. Look, I've even provided transport. Where's Albert? Oh, uh, he'll be staying with us. You can't do that. Yeah, but he's an old man. You can't keep him in those cells. Don't worry. I'm moving him to a nice custody suite where I can keep an eye on him. That way I can make sure you lot don't do a disappearing act on me. Call it insurance. That was not part of the deal. The deal's whatever I say it is. You nasty bastard. Just bring me rice. Questions? Did you have an unhappy childhood? Well, not long. Shouldn't be too long, Grandad. As long as your friends do as they're told. May I ask you something? I'm going to find you and your playmates. That's an obvious question, yeah. Detective Chief Inspector Mullen. He resigned two years ago after your crew made him a laughing stock by impersonating one of their officers. I recall the name. Impressive. So this is about revenge for Mullen. Oh, 
What happened to him is his own stupid fault. I want a job done. You fit the bill. Sign a thief to catch a thief, huh? Precisely. Well, if you're smart enough to know that, you must be smart enough to know that Mickey is going to come after you. Oh, I am. That's why I'm not letting you go. What have we got so far? Right. <clears throat> Detective Chief Inspector Matthew York, the Met's blue-eyed boy. Started off in the Midlands and is credited with the first zero-tolerance policy in the UK. Moved to the Met two years ago. This bloke's a one-man crime prevention unit. The only one who comes close to his clean-up record is a DCI Neil Cooper from Middlesex. Now, from what I can gather, this Cooper bloke's had a good month. So, York needs a high-profile collar in order to maintain his status as golden bollocks. He framed us for something we didn't do, so we know he's dishonest. Yep, and he needs our money. Yeah, well, his philosophy seems to be to do whatever it takes to get a conviction. He concentrates on high-profile crime, that way he gets his face in the paper when he clears it up. Which is why he wants Adam Rice. Do we know who this Rice bloke is? Well, everyone knows a ghost. Well, I don't. He's an artist. Yeah, he's been number one on their burglary most wanted list for the past six years. Right. So how the bleeding hell are we supposed to catch him, then? We're screwed. No, no, I am not leaving Albert in jail. Ash, can you track down Rice? Yeah, I can try. Then do it. Call me back, yeah? A few years ago, the police set up a honey trap for Rice. Nev, Ash Morgan. And they made sure she was a Yeah, I'm looking for someone. Someone to get right under His name's skin Adam Rice, yeah. So, he slept with her. That's right. Told her all about his next job, which was to steal the ruby slippers from the Wizard of Oz. And he let them stake out that target while he hit somewhere else. Yeah, no, I tried, Peter. He didn't even know he was in town. Sounds like quite a charmer. Yeah, so I've heard. Oh. So are we really going to deliver him to the police? If it means we can get Albert out, yes. Yeah, we'll put the word about, yeah? See ya. Can't believe the old bell nicked our money. So now we're broke Hello? and screwed. Hold on. Hey, Jack. I found him. I swear, Mick, he just disappeared into thin air. Yeah, well, he's a ghost, isn't he? Did he see you? I don't think so. Look, if you ask me, he's the kind of bloke who's used to being followed, and he pulls the odd stroke just in case. OK. OK, we'll try again tomorrow. Take Stacey with you. We're up. Terrorist unit, we need your car out of the car, Welcome please, back. sir. Thank you. Wait here. Hey. Thank you. Hey, that's my car. make contact with Rice. How? Well, me and Stacy discovered he's got an interesting hobby. Which is? No. All right. 
No. No way. Before you all come up with a plan, OK? No. I know you think this is the funny bit, where you, you know, you get a little scam together, dress me up as an astronaut, frogman, Joe Knighty, whatever, OK? But I draw the line getting off a plane before it's landed. Danny, don't tell me you're frightened of heights. No problems with heights, love, all right? Love heights. Me and heights, beautiful thing, all right? There's no way I'm jumping off a plane while it's still in the air with a giant anky strapped to me back. Not even for Albert. When you land, you need to bend your knees, Danny, all right? And if you're coming in fast, you bend and you roll. So, Ash, are we ready? Whoa! Whoa, whoa! All we've done is jump off a box twice. Would you like to do it again? You said I'd have proper training. Danny, how hard can it be? You jump and then you land. We've covered it. But what if the, you know, parachute thing don't open? Well, then you pull your reserve. But what if the reserve don't open? All right, OK, look, if the reserve doesn't open, there's a standard procedure, all right? Tell me that. All right, now, you grab the knees of your jumpsuit and you lean forward. Go on. Like that? Yeah. Further. That's it. Good. Yeah. Stick your head between your legs. And you kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for the support. Morning. All right. Weather's holding up. Yeah. Are you jumping at 2.30? Yeah. So are we. Michael Stone. Danny Blow. Adam Rice. So, how many jumps have you done? A few. What about you, Danny? Oh, oh no. It's quite new! Ready? Danny? You go, I'll catch you up! Danny! Yeah? OK! The last one to the bar buys the drinks! Oh! OK, OK, why are we sorry? I won't be a gift anymore! I want to be a postman! OK! You two, come on! Okay, ready? No! One! Mickey, let's not do it! Two! Mickey, no! <laughs> Where's Daddy? Hello? Oh. Hello? Hey! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thought I'd uh, go back up and I'll have another go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wasn't exactly a soft landing, was it? It's sort of the wind really <laughs> took me off course. It's not funny, lads, so I could have been seriously maimed out there. Right? Yeah, maybe next time. I'll be flaming next time. So, what do you guys do? We're con men. Con men? And you are a thief. <laughs> Look, it's OK. It's OK. We know who you are and what you do. And we're fans, really. Well, that answers a question. Oh? Don't believe in chance meetings. I have a proposition for you. Would you like to hear it? I'm intrigued enough to still be sitting here. Whatever it is you're planning to steal, you will sell once. Whereas we would copy it and sell it five times. Go on. I already have a team in place. It could save you a lot of running around. Oh, I rarely run. But you do need a team. Perhaps, but I usually do the finding, not the other way around. The team that I have stole the Star of Africa diamond. We had five buyers, made enough copies to deliver to all five, and then put the original back in place. Michael Stone. 
bloody hell, you're Mickey Briggs. I thought you was undercover police. I'm honoured. Probably heard of me too. Danny Blue. Sorry, mate. Your bellman <clears throat> used to be three socks more good. He still is. So, what do you think? Like I said, I usually find my own team. So thanks, but no thanks. It was a pleasure to meet you. So, what plan B? We do not have a plan B. But you always had a plan B. Yes, well, I don't. Not now, Danny. Uh, Mr. York seems to be enjoying my discomfort. Little shit. You know we're doing everything we can to get you out of here. Michael will think of something. Things not going too well, my dear. It's impossible. Trust Michael. I do. I just hate you being here. Is there anything you need? Yes, there is. So Stone's made contact with Rice. What will he do next? Well, he'll deliver him. What else can he do? Well, if you read his file, he tends to do things you don't expect. Look, I've got the drug charges and I've got the old man. He's screwed and he knows it. Oh, he must be furious. He is. When this is done, he'll come after me. Why do you think that? Claimed in 28 days, you can come back and get it. Eric, can you take this to the store? So we'll know everywhere that Stone and his gang are saying. Well, I'm wrapped in a trap with the rig wind on the old boat. You're so clever. Am I? <laughs> Look, this is stupid. Let's go and talk to Rice again. Mickey played his best card. We lost. How's Albert? Well, he's putting on a brave face. But I know him. He's hating it. I still say we go and talk to Rice again. I thought I made it clear I like to do the finding. How the bleeding hell did you get in here? Miss Spent Youth. Sorry I was so short at the flying club, but... Well, I had to make sure you were you said you were. You've been checking us out? Of course. I'm very careful. So I stay out of prison. Well, you've already met Danny. This is Stacey Monroe. Charmed. And this is Ash Morgan. Very great pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Likewise. So, what are we going to steal? Hans Christian Andersen was at Copenhagen University in the late 1820s. He shared a room with a man called Peter Van Hugh. Some say it was Van Hugh who later encouraged Andersen to write. They stayed friends his whole life. Oh. I used to love them stories. Anderson had just finished working on a new book of stories a week before he died. He told his publishers about it, but the manuscript was never found. For a hundred years, the publishing world thought it was lost. But you found it. It transpires that Van Hugh wasn't the good friend he professed to be. Well, he nicked off Hans Christian. Precisely. The manuscript's been tracked down to Van Hugh's great-grandson, an eccentric who lived in Winfield Hall, just outside Isleworth. He died last week with no heirs, and the contents of his estate are to be auctioned off. Well, it must be worth millions. I have a client that doesn't want to risk being out bit of the auction. So he's hired you to steal it for him? Yeah. The auction house is clearing the estate the day after tomorrow, so we need to steal it tomorrow night. How much security? Lots. That's why I'm looking for help. And as much as I respect your reputation, Mickey, it was Mr. Morgan who was the real draw. He thinks you're the nuts, Ash. So what do you think? Ah, I'm going to raise you ten. You're bluffing. Oh, come on, yeah. Here ten. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, 
You're right, I was bluffing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's very cramped in here, Eric. Isn't there some place else we could play? This is the estate. A thousand acres with borderland, surrounded by a 14-foot electrical fence. It's only accessible by one security gate. Or one way in, one way out. Exactly. The main computer at the front security gate controls the separate alarm systems to each one of the three wings of the house. Well, by hacking into the computer system, I should be able to get the security passwords to deactivate the alarms. Then I can disable them in turn while you go through the building. You can do that? Yeah, if I can get through the main gate. Stacy, can you distract the guard? Well, I'm sure I can think of something. OK, where will this manuscript actually be? The manuscript's in the third wing of the house, in a glass display case. The old boy was so terrified someone was going to steal his heirloom, he installed a mechanism where three levers have to be turned simultaneously. That way, no one can take it on their own. OK, then Danny and I will come with you. Also, the perimeter fence is electrified. Well, hang on, hang on. So we can knock this fence out, can we? Yeah, but only once we're inside the house. The switch is under the basement in the second wing. So uh, how do you three get in? That's all under control. OK, so uh, are we done? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Then let's meet up tomorrow, 4.30, at Eddie's bar. We seem to have it all worked out. Yeah, great. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Yeah, pleasure. See you. Much better in here, eh? Away from prying eyes. I couldn't agree more. I call. Uh huh. Three folders. Full house. <laughs> That's three in a row now. <laughs> they say the devil loves his own. Ah, yeah. How about uh, a tea break? Yeah. Go on. But no fixing the deck while my back's turned. Oh. I wouldn't dream of I don't like this any more than you do. But the only way to save Albert is to make sure that Adam Rice is caught in that house, red-handed. York will not settle for anything else. And to do that, we need to go in there with him. Yeah, well, he's a shame. He's a nice bloke, isn't he? Yes, yes, I know, but there's no other way. Never. Never thought I'd end up a grass. OK, Danny, do you have an alternative? There isn't one. Look, let's just get this done. I'll meet with your contender. Order a cup of tea, Albert. Thank you. Thank you. You're feeling all right? You haven't eaten again? Uh, no, I just don't seem to have any appetite. No, they're all right for cards tonight, aren't they? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Albert? Oh. Oh. Jesus. <sighs> oh. Everything seems fine. Perhaps the lack of fresh air made you feel a little lightheaded. Uh, not eating wouldn't have helped. I'm sure that's all it was. Hey, your mate's here. The top bloke, him. Even pays for his drinks. Thought you'd change your mind. I thought about it. First night nerves, eh? Something like that. We ready? We're ready. Then let's go and steal a manuscript. I should have guessed! Relax, Danny! We're going in low to get accuracy! Well, why don't we land the plane to be really accurate? I think they might notice! But it's dark out there! I won't be able to see where I'm going! Well, you said you closed your eyes last time anyway! You'll hit the spot, don't worry! Let's go! Stay close! OK! Come on! Mickey, Come on! Mickey, I can't do this! Mickey, seriously! You'll be all right! Seriously, no, Ricky!
Hello? 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 Oh, thank God. Um, can you help me? My car's broken down. It just sort of shuddered to a halt and died, and I'm all on my own. It's all dark. Do you want me to phone um, someone? No, 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 no. Um, would you just have a look at it for me? Um, I'm sure it's something really simple. Be ever so grateful. Just a sec. Thank you. Sorry, mate. I was just didn't see ya. Yeah, it's what happens when you close your eyes. You should have pushed me out of bleeding plane, then, should ya? Ash and Stacy would be at the gatehouse by now. We have to go. You're gonna have to help me. Okay. Wait, wait. The engine was in here. Yeah. Entrance now. We'll let you know when we're in. That door just opened by itself. Come on. Just one. This way. Like a shot of brandy in your tea, just to keep out the cold. I'll be five minutes. No peeking. will put you right back on top. We need to deactivate the electric fence. Okay. Down there is the basement. You'll find the fuse box for the main fence. Drop the switch, we'll meet you in the display room. How about in? We'll manage. Go!
One of our gotta go downstairs. Point. I haven't done anything. Oh, come on. No, no, I'm supposed to be in duty. There's a local garage a couple of miles away. I'll give them a call. Oh, no, wait. Um, I've got something I want to give you. What? <laughs> Trev, can you go and check the main fuse panel in the basement? Looks like the fence is down. On my way. Mick, you've got to move on this one. They discovered the fence is down. Okay, we're outside the room now. We're inside. Where's the levers? It's the gargoyles. You grab one inch, we turn to the right. Ready? Okay. On three. One. him there. Yo, that's your problem, not mine. Just do it. I'm on my way. Right, call the cavalry. It should take them three minutes. It's just enough time for them to see me dragging rice out single-handed. Sergeant Eastman, I want backup, please, to Winfield Hall as quick as you. That was quick. Thanks. Whatever. It isn't DCI Cooper the nearly man? What are you doing here? We had a tip off. So whatever's going on, this is a Middlesex collar. Oh no. Well, I've been running a covert operation, which makes it my collar. Please open up.
This had better be good. I know who did this. I can take you to them. Who? We ran a check on the names Mr. York gave us. They're showing us being in custody. Yeah, well, it would show that, but they're not really because I let them go. It's complicated. Are they in custody or not? Not. Have any of these people left the station? Of course not, how could they? You have to listen to me. They did the robbery. Well, it's hardly likely, is it, Mr. York? All right, look. I told you this was an undercover operation. I was using them to help catch the ghost. Ghost? Adam Rice! I offered them the deal on the drugs charges. What drugs charges? This was the case found in their possession. I think you'll find it corroborates my story. Sherbet. Vanilla sherbet, I think you'll find. I'm a confectionery salesman. He's lying. What don't you see? This was cocaine. He's conning us. Don't you see? That's what he does. Him and the ghost. Maybe it's time you took a holiday. Release him. No. No, wait. It's not sure, but it's cocaine. I've, I've got a press conference. You know what? I think I'll take it. Tell him about the internal affairs investigation I'm about to start. You did this. I was you. I think I mentioned earlier, I am not a thief. I had you bang to rights. How did you do it? You're a bright boy, Matty. Work it out. Is there anything you need? Yes, yes. How much sherbet would you like? Six kilos, please. What? If it's not claimed in 28 days, you can come back and get it. Eric, can you take this to the store? So we'll know everywhere that Stone and his gang are saying. Look like rats in a trap with a big window, though, about it. <laughs> Look, this is stupid. Let's go and talk to Rice again. Mickey played his best card. We lost. How's Albert? Well, he's putting on a brave face. But I know him. He's hating it. I still say we go and talk to Rice again. Never thought I'd end up a grass. OK, Danny, do you have an alternative? There isn't one. Let's get this done. I'll meet with you all, can tell him we're on. You know, it's very cramped in here, Eric. Isn't there some place else we could play? Nothing like a shot of brandy. Just to keep out the cold. I'll be five minutes. No peeking.
To keep out the cold. Right. Trev, can you go and check the main fuse panel in the basement? Looks like the fence is down. On my way. Mickey's got a move on this one. They discovered the fence is down. They'll have to find another way out. in a manuscript. Uh, before we do this, there's, um, there's something you should know. What? We've all been working for Detective Chief Inspector Matthew York. You want me to do what? Like if someone handed it in. It's uh, brilliant, that, mate. My little girl's gonna be made up. You know what? I think he's ever so handsome. I mean, if you like that, you know, obvious squared jaw, six pack rubbish. <laughs> well, now you come to mention it. Yeah, well, I reckon is, you know. Bit gay. Seriously. I mean, you don't get skin like that without using moisturizer. They give away. Really? Yeah. Folks know these things. We've got like a sixth sense on it. Not right, Eddie? Yeah, definitely. You know, if I didn't know you better, Danny, I'd say you were jealous. Me? Jealous? So how's your ankle? Hairline fracture, it'll mend. I'm sorry you got dragged into all of this. Oh, it's fun. Should do it again. Oh, no, 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 no. I think we'll stick to grip. <laughs> well, if you change your mind. <laughs> what time's your buyer due? Any minute. Well, I have to say, that was quite right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Albert, um, where's the cocaine? Oh, I flushed it down the toilet. So, uh, what happened to the 90 grand we got for the old ashes thing? Well, the police have still got that. No, they don't. Idea what's going on here, but it's great. <laughs> well, I wonder what kind of day Mr. York had. <laughs> I love you. Well, your buyer's late. Yeah, well, I need a leak, so keep him warm for me if he comes in before I get back. What's he look like? I haven't met him yet. He said he'd wear a flower in his button over <laughs> Nice kid. Nice kid. He is, definitely. Yeah. You know, I think I might take up that uh, skydiving life. I reckon I'm a bit of a... Ah, I'm a troll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I'm very touched that Danny would risk his life to get me out of prison. Yeah, no, fair play to you, Danny. It must have taken a lot of bottle Hey, guys, you know, we're a team, aren't we? Never leave a man down in the field. One of us is in danger. There comes a time in a guy's life. You've got to step up to the plate. You've, you've got to say, yeah, I'll be counted. Very articulate, Danny. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, that's why people like York, they underestimate us, you see. They don't understand how smart we are. He should learn to expect the unexpected. Because we are brilliant, aren't we? I mean, we're brilliant. Anything you throw at us, we can handle it. Oh, dear, Danny's going into one again. Yeah, well, it's only a matter of time. That's what it's about, isn't it? Thinking on your feet, dealing with any situation, knowing that whatever happens, hey, kids, we always come out 
on top. Mm. Yes. <coughs> guys, guys. Satisfaction in me. A little more bite, a little less spark. A little less fight, a little more spark. Close your mouth and open up your heart, and baby, satisfy me. Satisfy me, baby. Baby, close your eyes and listen to the music. Dig to the summer breeze. It's a groovy night, and I can show you how to use it. Come along with me and put your mind at ease. A little less conversation, a little more action. All this aggravation ain't satisfaction in me. 